Right, it's half past, we'll get cracking. I think I'll just come back in a second. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say thank you for everybody for actually taking time to come out on a Saturday afternoon, uh, especially after the disappointing rugby school this morning. Uh, anybody that's heard me talk before, I do occasionally drop the occasional swear word. It's not meant in any malice. I just get a bit excited and carried away. So I've dropped the occasional F-bomb. It's still got a bit excited. I also tend to talk very, very quickly. Uh, so I will be slowing things down for you. But I've got a lot of information to get through today. Um, so I'm Daniel, uh, I'm the head coach here, uh, and I'm the uh, owner of the Prime Life Project, which is essentially uh, now the personal trainers here all work under one brand, which is the Prime Life Project. Underneath the Prime Life Project, I run a thing called Lean Queens, which is an eight-week female fat loss course, which is aimed at educating females on the com complexities of fat loss. As in my time in Key Worth, I found that a lot of females tend to be struggling with the slimming world and the Weight Watchers, and it's purely because of the misinformation. People don't actually know enough about fat loss. So the whole thing with Lean Queens is about education. So what I'm going to give you today is basically a brief overview of the nutrition that I do in Lean Queens. Now bearing in mind with the Lean Queens, that's three hours. So there's three nutrition talks, it's three hours. I've got one hour today, and this isn't aimed at specifically females, this is overall fat loss principles uh, and for nutrition. Uh, but like I said, I've got a lot of information to get through. So if I run over, I'll let you guys know when it is half past two. If everyone's happy to carry on, and I am running over, then we'll carry on. Uh, I do tend to go off on tangents, because again, I get very excited, which is why I've got the presentation to pull me back in again. Please, if you've got any questions, write them down and save them to the end, because if you ask me a question, I'll probably forget where I am in my presentation, because I'm a bit of a nightmare like that. So any questions, by all means, at the end, the whole point of this presentation is to help you guys. So if you do have questions, please hold them to the end, and I will answer all your questions, even if I have to stay behind longer for you guys. So don't stress, write them down. As we go along, I'll cover them for you. So, moving swiftly on, what are the outcomes of today's talk? Uh, well, essentially, I want you guys to understand what fat loss really takes. Um, people think fat loss is something really simple, and everyone's looking for the quick fix when it comes to fat loss, like the latest nutrition plan, the latest supplement, and everyone wants it to be quick and simple, and it's never, ever that simple. Um, like I said, I could talk about fat loss all day, and that's something I'm looking to do next year, is basically do a one-day fat loss thing where we're going to all the complexities of fat loss and what it really takes. But today, I'm basically just going to sort of give you guys a bit of an overview on what it really takes nutrition-wise to actually get long-term sustainable fat loss. Because at the end of the day, you can lose weight in a week. But we all know you lose weight in a week, it comes back on 10 times worse. So my thing with my clients is it's all about long-term sustainable fat loss. I don't care about you getting fat loss in a week. It's irrelevant. Unless you've got a wedding dress to fit into, or you're a boxer and you've got to hit a weight for a competition, I don't care that you can drop 10 pounds in a week. We all know people at Christmas, oh, I've dropped a stone in two days. Look at that person by summertime, I guarantee they've not uh, maintained that. So what I'm going to do today is cover some of the basic principles that you need to understand for long-term successful fat loss, which is what I try and instill in all of my clients. Also, we're going to learn that carbs are not the enemy. Uh, this is the main thing for females, that everyone is convinced that carbohydrates are the enemy. I'm going to go into a little bit of stuff about why carbs aren't the enemy. And again, on the Lean Queens course, I spend about 45 minutes talking about why carbs aren't the enemy. So again, today's a brief overview, but you need to understand that carbs are not the enemy. One of the first topics I'm going to talk about is what actually health means. And basically, people use the term health, and I'm eating healthy and all this sort of stuff. But people don't actually really understand what that means. So I'm going to delve a little bit deeper into that. What is a macro? So some people here will know what a macro is. But again, the term macro, macronutrient. Most people here will know what that means, but some people have heard it on social media, on the latest women's health, men's health, celebrity thing, and people have no clue what that means. So we're going to delve into what is a macro and how it uh, relates into fat loss and basic principles of nutrition. We'll talk about how calories are ultimately king. I'm going to give you uh, some very, very simple four steps on how to construct your own nutrition plan. Uh, and basically, if we get time at the end, talk about why scales rely. If I don't get into the part where scales rely, what I will do is I will post and record a little 15-minute chat basically talking to you guys, and basically I'll give you guys that for free. So if I don't get to Scales Rely, you will get that information. I'll just record it another time for you guys. So, moving swiftly on. A lot of people, when it comes to weight loss, they focus on just the weight on the scales. Weight loss is the key. They've got this big little iceberg, and everyone focuses on the weight loss. But the real thing you need to focus on is less about the weight and what the scales are saying, and you need to focus on what is underneath the iceberg. And this is things that people miss out on a regular basis. Behaviors. Consistency, uh, habit management, and emotional coping. Emotional coping is the, basically the, the thing that no one really speaks about, and I spend so much time with my clients one-to-one, -one, even in the initial consultation, which is completely free, 
breaking down people's emotional barriers with eating is a massive, massive thing that people struggle with, males and females, emotional eating. You know about habit management. Are your, ha are your habits helping you succeed in your fat loss goal and with your nutrition plan? If your habits are not helping you, you're making things a million times harder for yourself. On top of that, you've got to be consistent. There's no good. I did a video on this on my Instagram, so feel free to search back for it. I've got a massive long beard. You can't miss it. I did a video on consistency. There's no good sticking to your nutrition plan Monday to Friday and having a massive binge on your Saturday and then eating nothing on Sunday. Day. You're completely self-sabotaging yourself. Consistency is key and ultimately your behaviours. What you do on a consistent basis with your habits and emotional eating equal your behaviours which will then give you the fat loss results. There's absolutely no point in me giving you the perfect nutrition and training plan for you even if I spend three hours writing it and none of this is in place because you will fail. It is that simple. I don't care what anyone says to you. If you do not have the emotional coping mechanisms, the habit management, the consistency of sticking to my plan or the behaviours, you will fail. Hands down, that simple, okay? So you need to look at the underlying factors and not simply what the scales say, which is what everyone does. Step on the scales, oh, I've dropped a pound, cool. We smashed three cheesecake yesterday, but the weight's gone down, so it's okay. It doesn't work like that. There's so many underlying factors that people don't address. Then from there, we've got the fat loss pyramid. So ultimately, calories are king. It's that simple. Calories are the base of the pyramid. On top of that, you've got macros, which we're going to get into. Then the timings that you eat your calories and your macros. Then the composition, so the makeup of the macros and the calories. And then ultimately, it's supplements and hydrations at the top. So the supplements, the things that people think are one, the fat loss pill. Fat loss pills do not work. If they did, anyone who's clinically obese would be given a fat loss pill and we would not have an obesity epidemic. It's common sense, but people think these things work. No, people are trying to steal your money. The whole thing I do with my clients and lean queens is my business model is you pay me money, I educate you so you don't have to come back. That's my business model. I want to educate you so you understand it. You've got your things like your, your stim and your weight watchers. Their thing is take Herbalife, take our supplements and you'll get fat loss. Okay, then when you stop the supplements, what happens? Oh, go back to Herbalife. Oh, go back to Slimming World, go back to Weight Watchers. It shouldn't be that way. The key thing is your calories are the king, the macros, the timings, the composition, and the occasional supplements and nutri supplementation and hydration. But ultimately, the opposite side is your adherence. As I said earlier on, I could give you the best plan in the world that uses all the latest scientific research. If you cannot stick to it, what is the point? Because again, going back to the laws earlier on, you don't have any consistency. Okay? So ultimately, these things are most important but you need to be able to adhere to your nutrition plan. So when it comes to nutrition plans, I am not against giving my clients things like white wraps, cheese, a little bit of chocolate, if that's what it takes them to stick to the plan. Because ultimately, that's the key thing. Consistency over the long term. Fat loss is not a one month thing. Fat loss is a six month thing, a 12 month thing. And if you look at some of the transformations I've got coming out recently, uh, coming out uh, soon, they're long term projects. I've got a lady that's been with me for over a year, but her results are incredible. But I guarantee you she won't go back to where she's been because it's taken a year to actually undo all the bad habits from what she's done before. It's not a quick fix. So, moving on, getting a little bit morbid. The world is set up for you to fail. It is cheaper for you to go to McDonald's and buy yourself a meal than it is to go down to the supermarket and buy healthy food. That's the sad reality of what it is. The supermarkets don't care if you're overweight. They, they, don't, they don't care, they're not bothered. So it's down to you guys to take responsibility for yourself and what you're putting into your mouth. You can't use ignorance as an excuse. There's so much information now that tells you what you should be doing, so you then have to take responsibility for the fact you don't go and smash a McDonald's. I'm not saying you don't do it every now and again. I smash a McDonald's every now and again, but if you're doing the rest of the things, you're absolutely fine. But it's when you're doing it every week as a treat, or you can't be bothered and you smash a McDonald's, then wondering why, why, why you can't get the fat loss. So ultimately, the world is set up for you to fail, but with the strategies we're going to talk about today, I'm going to hopefully uh, deconfuse you to give you the things that actually help you. But ultimately, you've got to remember that companies are out to make money. That's their end goal. It's that simple. You'll notice when you walk into Asda in West Bridge, if that's where you go, what's the first thing you will see and you're presented with? Christmas chocolates, donuts, co cookies, whatever it is, they're right there in front of you. So just pick them out. But when you have the awareness to know they're there to trip you up, you can avoid them. It's the awareness to know, no, 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 I'm all right, thank you. I know what I've got to do and stick into your plan and having the mental awareness. Uh, the biggest thing with fat loss that I normally cover first, which again is what my other topics are normally on, is the mindset. You've got to have the mindset to actually have the awareness of what's going on around you. So from there, this is a typical Western diet. So typically people wake up, they'll have some sort of toast, cereal, cereal bar, a coffee, probably with some sugar. Uh, then mid-morning, have a snack. Uh, biscuit, chocolate bar, again, tira coffee with sugar. Again, it's the lunchtime, you've got your meal deals, because again, they're cheap, so you get a sandwich, which is what you want, but you bag a bag of crisps for a chocolate bar, and you get your sugary uh, Coke drink as well. Then you have an afternoon tea. As British people love our afternoon teas, but what essentially is it? 
it's coffee and sugar in your teas with biscuits and chocolates that are really nice. And then in dinner time, that's when we tend to consume our big healthy meals, which are just loaded with essentially carbohydrates, which are not the enemy, but essentially you load all your calories in the evening, and sometimes people don't even have the breakfast in the morning. But essentially, give or take, a lot of people can relate to this, but all it is is low protein, low fat, and carbo high carbohydrates, which is why people say carbs are the devil. No, they're not the devil. It's purely the fact that if you worked out all the calories for that, you're eating a stupid amount of calories that's made up predominantly of carbohydrates. But carbohydrates are not the enemy, which we'll get to in a second. So essentially, this terrible Western diet leads to a blood sugar roller coaster. So you wake up in the morning, number one, breakfast, blood sugar spikes, crashes mid morning, you get more food in, you a bit of sugary snack, goes up, crashes down around lunchtime, sugary snack, sugary snack. Basically, you, you, you're bouncing around all day on this blood sugar roller coaster, which sends your insulin all over the shop. Now again, this is what happens when you have carbohydrates. This is not a problem unless you are consuming a stupid amount of calories and then this little blood sugar roller coaster will cause you absolute nightmares. This red dot here is where your blood sugar should be. You need blood sugar, you need carbohydrates for your brains to function. It's that simple. So people say low carb diets. Okay, keep the ketogenic diet scientifically has been proven to really help people. But are you ever not going to eat a carbohydrate again? No. So why the fuck would you do it? That simple. So because keto is in fashion, it's trendy, if you want to eat no carbs again, knock yourself out, okay? But then don't moan to everyone, oh, I want a carb. You've chosen that, okay? We're going to get into all these diet and the fads, that, that's another thing we're covering today, fads, fad diets. But essentially, what the body wants is a nice, steady, small curve of blood sugar. And what tends to happen is, when you shoot it up, your body's down here. It wants to be here. It doesn't say to you, Daniel, have half a biscuit, mate, and I'll be cool. You just say, I'm starving, I need sugar. So then you overshoot it, you go down again, I'm starving. It doesn't say, Dan, she did a little bit, all day long, you're on this blood sugar roller coaster, and most people can't get off it, and this is what ultimately, along with the uh, excess of calories, causes fat gain. When blood sugar drops, blood sugar drops, too low, your body will raise cortisol to tell you that you need to get your blood sugar levels back up to baseline. Your body is trying to protect you. If your blood sugar drops, your body is saying, I think I'm going to die, I need some sugar. If you don't know what this means, Christmas Day, after you've smashed your dinner, and at half an hour later, you want to fall asleep, that is literally your blood sugar falling off the end of the earth. That's what that is. So everyone's experienced it. When you've had a massive meal and you want to go to sleep, that is basically what your body's doing. Your blood sugars have dropped, and you're saying, bloody hell, like, I need to nap here. Like, I'm not in a good place. And then your body will then recope itself back to baseline. Okay? This is essentially an extreme example of, uh, where people have um, diabetes. They're very, very bad at mismanaging this. So this is how people get diabetes on a very simplistic scale is when this goes out of control for too long and the body cannot get itself back to baseline. So you need to inject yourself with the thing to get you back to the baseline, okay? So if this is how cravings are caused, blood sugar goes up, insulin's rise, cortisol rises, and basically you're in a horrible little never-ending cycle, which is why you end up craving things sweet after you've had a very high carbohydrate meal. This is where the dessert thing comes from. So then when you've had that big meal and you're absolutely stuffed, and half an hour later, oh yeah, I found a bit of chocolate cake. Body trying to get blood sugar back up again. You don't have a second stomach. It's just purely your body trying to get itself back up to baseline again. And then after you've had that dessert, you feel even worse than you did before. That's where this comes from. And again, as I said, you now can't use ignorance as an excuse because I've told you what's happening. Trust me, Christmas Day, you'll be thinking of me. You're welcome. So, carbs are not the enemy. Consuming too many calories is. That is the take-home thing at the minute. So that little thing, don't stress, go a little bit more into in, in, in a second. But ultimately, calories are king. Uh, but you need to have good quality calories. So we're going to get into a little bit later on about what a calorie actually is. Because people are petrified of calories. They hear the word calories and they freak out. 500 calories and they freak out. Don't worry about that. We're going to explain all what that is. But first of all, we need to go back to basics. I'm sorry there's a naked man, but I need to get my point across. So we need to go back to basics. What people do is, when the body breaks down, they try and put a band-aid over it. I've got stomachache, ibuprofen, paracetamol. I've got a headache, paracetamol. But you need to go back and look at the organ system, then the organ, then the tissue, and ultimately your cells. It sounds stupid, but if this is broken, you don't have a headache because you are lacking ibuprofen. You don't have a headache because you need paracetamol. That's not how it works. Your cells in your body are saying, I need some help. So you've got to go back to your nutrition. Are you giving your cells what they ultimately need? That simple, okay? And people don't think of it like this. So when it comes to what is health, I'm eating healthy. Ask you, why am I eating healthy? 
Oh, because you need to eat healthy. Yeah, but why? Because everyone says go eat healthy. Eat for health for your cells. It is that simple. Eating healthy is all about going back to the basics and giving your cells what they need so the tissues work properly, the organs function properly, the organ systems work, and you are ultimately a healthy individual. Again, super simplistic, but you need to understand this is what people talk about when they say eating healthy. You need to hit all the things for your cells to work optimally. So, let's go a little bit into biochemistry. We're whizzing through this. You don't need to know anything about biochemistry, but it's to get the point across. So, we need to go back an atom. So, back all the way back here, an atom. So, an atom is basically the building blocks and all the elements and chemistries that are found on the periodic table. For example, zinc, magnesium, calcium, iron, oxygen. You've all heard of these things. They say fortified with zinc. Fortified. Or is this an atom? It's an atom. Simple you need to worry about. Combine two atoms together, you get a molecule. Water, sugar, glucose, amino acids, the building blocks for proteins, and fatty acids. Stick two molecules together, you get a macromolecule. What is a macromolecule? Proteins, fats, carbohydrates. We've all heard of them. A protein, a fat, and a carbohydrate, they are your macros. Macros, macronutrients, that's all it stands for. And all they are are macromolecules. Okay? Very, very simple. Then from there, they all make up your cell. And essentially, the cell is your life. So you need all of the atoms, macromolecules, and the molecules to feed the cell. So the cell, the cell is working optimally so that you work optimally. So when people are saying you need to get protein in your diet, yeah, you do, for your cells to work optimally. And we're going to go into more detail about your proteins, your carbs, and your fats, so you understand how important they are. But ultimately, people are missing the fundamental things that create life. And what's happening is the foods that we're eating nowadays, they have to be fortified with things. Fortified means they have shit in them, and we're just going to add a bit of good stuff in. It should have it in in the first place. We're not designed to be eating our packaged things. I'm not one of these like, nut jobs that says you've got to go and like, chase down a chicken and kill it. But ultimately, you've got to think, we're not designed to eat half the stuff we're eating nowadays, and we're wondering why, as a species, we're absolutely fucked. And it's because we're not going back to the basics. You need to give yourselves what they need. And I'm going to talk about this until I'm blue in the face. Give yourselves what they need and your body will keep you alive because ultimately it needs to keep you alive, otherwise there's no cells. They want to keep you alive. Your body wants to help you. If this is not working, it's your body saying, help me. Okay? Then from there, we've got uh, the cells. So normally, when I do my lean queens, I love a drawing. Anyone that's in a consultation with me or heard me talk, I love a drawing. But unfortunately, the whiteboard's in use for this, so I'll be drawing around now. But essentially, when it comes to cells, when it comes to fat loss and health, the key fundamental principle that you need is to reduce inflammation within your body. Because every single cell in your body, if it becomes rigid, the cells cannot talk to each other. So when you get brain fog, Potentially brain fog could just be that your brain cells are so rigid because it's inflamed from the crap quality food you're eating that your cells cannot talk to each other. When it comes to their blood sugar roller coaster and the insulin and all that sort of stuff, the cells need to be able to communicate with each other. They can't do that if they're rigid and hard. The cells should be fluid, and the only way the cells are fluid is if you're giving them what they need. High quality fats, which again, when people demonize fats, your cells are fundamentally made up of fats. So people that demonize fats, you need fats in your diet because your cells are made up of fats. So again, when, the, when you hear these things, fats are the enemy, carbs are bad, people haven't got a fucking clue what they're talking about. You need to go back to basic biochemistry to know what the body's made up of. Your cells are made up of fats. And when you're eating poor quality fats, like your donuts, your chocolate bars, and all sort of, they're man-made fats. They make your cells super, super rigid. And ultimately, what are fat cells? Cells. So if your fat cells are rigid, you can do the best thing in the world, but if you can't access them to break them down, is it any wonder why you're struggling? So you need to reduce inflammation so that you can actually start attacking the fat cells to break them down. Okay? People don't talk about this sort of stuff, but it's very basic stuff. But again, it doesn't sell books and doesn't make money. Because once you've heard it, you've heard it. Okay? So people are trying to spin things on it to basically with a hidden agenda. There's no hidden agenda here. But again, essentially your fats and all your enzymes, so you've got your enzymes, your pumps, and your receptors, they need to work properly on your cells for you to have optimal health, okay? So, give your body and brain what it needs. Proper nutrition, essential amino acids, which again we spoke about, the macromolecules, uh, and all the little minerals like the omega-3s, which again are fats, zinc, iron, B6, all the good stuff will allow your body to function optimally by creating what it needs. Your body will do the hard work, just give it what it needs to function. And then from there, you get better and stronger brain and ultimately cell communication, and then the body is ready to, ac to access the excess body fat. Okay? So the things you've got to do to actually tap into your fat cells. If you're dropping weight, a stupid amount of weight in a week, you have not broken down any fat. 
it'll be water, potentially muscle, because it's easier for the body to break down. And what ultimately happens is if you're dropping weight quickly and you're losing muscle mass, it will make it harder for you to, break, to drop body fat next time because essentially your muscles hold all the keys to fat loss, all the mitochondria. The more muscle you have, lean muscle mass, the easier it is for fat loss. So if you're crash dieting constantly over and over again and losing muscle mass, it will become harder and harder and harder for you to drop that weight because you're essentially giving yourself a massive disadvantage. Does that make sense? Yeah? So from there, every single chemical reaction that occurs within your body requires protein. So protein is not just for bodybuilders. And a lot of females get freaked out when they hear the word protein and imagine these big massive meatheads like Arnold Schwarzenegger smashing proteins. Like proteins are not bad. Every single chemical reaction that occurs within your body requires protein. So what are proteins used for? Again, quickly whizzing through this, I'll give you access to these after the, um, after the talk so you can read through it properly. But essentially, protein means first place or primary, meaning it is the main macronutrient you need to take into your body. If you don't have adequate carbohydrates or fats, the body can break down protein and convert them if needed. So the protein can be broken down and converted into carbohydrates if needed. So when people say, I'm on a no-carb diet, so all they're doing is smashing protein, stupid amounts of protein. They will be consuming carbohydrates because what the body's doing is breaking down the proteins and convert them into carbohydrates to keep your blood sugar stable. But it's very, very ineffective and your body hates it, so why would you do it, okay? So people say, I'm going no carbs, no carbs. You're not going no carbs because essentially your body's be converting the protein. Very ineffective, very, very hard, very stupid to do. Essentially proteins are enzymes, chemical messaging signalers and receptors. So it's used for everything and also connective tissue and fibers. Healthy fats. So, this study, I'm not going to go into more detail, but essentially a bloke a few years, a good few years ago, uh, 1970s, did a study of seven countries uh, when he actually had access to 22 countries. The results didn't match what he was searching for, which was demonized fats, so he ignored the rest of the countries. He had access to 22, he picked seven, and ultimately came to the conclusion that fat causes heart disease and all this sort of stuff. But he missed out the main tribes, like the Messiah, the Inuits, which their diet is predominantly high fat but it didn't match his study, so he conveniently got rid of them. And then from there, the low-fat guidelines came in, and since then, obesity skyrocketed. So again, we've gone from eating, in, the, in those day and age, all healthy things like butter and all that sort of stuff, all the good stuff that's natural, to all this artificial crap, and again, it tastes amazing. So it was any wonder obesity's gone up. I'm not saying it's the main reason, but there's a lot of fundamental things that have gone wrong that basically have led us on the wrong path when it comes to fat loss. So again, not going into detail on this, but essentially good fats, which is a little chart in a second which explains what good fats are, are very, very important for improving body composition, uh, insulin sensitivity, so we spoke about the blood sugar roller coaster, to get that back to normal, fats are essential, they reduce inflammation and they're very, very good for brain function. So again, a little more detail there, you can feel free to read that when I send you the slides. So good fats versus bad fats. So there is four types of fats. Monounsaturated, polyunsaturated, saturated, and ultimately trans fats. All of the rest are natural made. Trans fats are man made. So, you chemically bake, uh, like your pastries, your biscuits, your donuts, crisps, margarine, fried foods, and sweets. If you take one thing from this course, throw your margarine away and go back to butter. Because margarine is about as close to plastic as you can get. It's so fucking shit for you, it's unbelievable. Go back to butter, go back to nature, go back to your grass fed organic butter, and it'll do you so much better. But all these things are natural. They can't be bad for you. We've, we've literally survived and evolved as a species for thousands of years with this stuff. This stuff gets introduced and we're all fucked, okay? Remember what I said about your cells. These are not good for your cells. They make your cells rigid. Ultimately, when it comes to stuff like um, cellular on females, it's a whole other topic, but essentially that is when fat and water don't mix. So the fat gets pushed up. And it, in cellular, it tends to be a lot of toxic fat. And a lot of the toxic fat comes from all the crappy foods and alcohol. But again, it's another talk. So. From here, it's all about energy balance. So ultimately, every single diet you ever hear and have ever dropped body fat and weight on is all to do with this principle. I don't care if it's a Cambridge diet. I don't care if you're vegan. I don't care if you're vegetarian. Keto, paleo, Herbalife, my diet, anything. Any, anything that you can think of, any fad diet, it only works because of this principle. It is that simple. I don't care what anyone says to you. This is how it works. Anyone that says it's a magic formula, no. Simply, calories in versus calories out. This is a very simplistic view, 
But ultimately, this is what it goes down to. So energy balance. Let's say you're consuming 2,500 calories and out's going 2,500. Your base will essentially will stay at the same weight. If you're consuming more calories than you're burning off, you will gain weight. If you're burning off more calories than you're consuming, you will lose weight. So if you are dropping body fat and weight on a diet, you're in a calorie deficit. Fact. Categorical, undeniable fact. I don't care what anyone says. So when it comes to formulas, I'm going to give you in a second to create your own nutrition plan. People will be like, oh, my formula says I should be on 2,000 calories. I'm eating 4,000 calories and dropping body weight. That might be fine. If you, for your whole life, have been consuming 6,000 calories, that is then your baseline. So by dropping it from 6,000 to 4,000, you are then in a calorie deficit. Does that make sense? The formulas you get online are not based on you. It's just a simple equation. It doesn't know actually what you've been doing your entire life. So if you are struggling with fat loss, there's a very good chance you're over-consuming your calories. So let's make it very, very simple. 4,000 calories here. 4,000 calories, you're gaining weight. This formally typing online, it tells you you should be consuming 2,000 calories. If you drop your calories from 4,000 to 3,000, you are in a calorie deficit. Although according to that formula, you're not. But from what you have personally been eating, you've lowered it from 4,000 to 3,000, you're then in a calorie deficit for what your body's baseline is. Because if you've been consuming 4,000 calories for years, that is your body's new baseline. And the formulas online available to everyone does not know you've been consuming 4,000 calories your entire life. Does that make sense? And what people tend to do is, the thought, oh, it should be in 2,000 calories. So I'll drop it from 4,000 straight down to 2,000 and wonder why they're fucking starving and can't stick to the plan. So remember, I did a video on Instagram actually the other day. Fat loss is all about eating as many calories as you possibly can while getting body fat and weight drop. People have got it completely wrong. People try and drop their calories as low as possible. Why would you want to drop your calories as low as possible and starve yourself when you could potentially be eating 1,000 calories more? Why would you choose to eat 1,000 calories less? It makes no sense. Is everyone with me on that? Does that make sense? So with it, it's completely individualized. But ultimately, if you are struggling with weight and struggling with body fat, you are not in a calorie deficit. So again, in a second, we're going to go into what you can do about that. Because that's essentially what people are here for today. I just need to give you all the back information. It would be very responsible of me to just give you the formula. And again, the formula I give you today, remember, it's a formula you've got to take with a pinch of salt. Okay? Because I don't know your specific... Uh, what you're doing with your nutrition plan, uh, and normally my clients, so everyone in the Prime Life Project and the Lean Queens, we're going to a bit more detail. So today, it's just to give you a basic fundamental starting place where you can figure things out for yourself. So what uh, constitutes as calories in? So the foods you eat and drink. So the foods you eat and drink, everything has a calorie in it. Everything. Apart from your Diet Cokes, so zero calories, everything else has a calorie in it. The squash you put into your water, calorie. The sugar, calorie. Even black coffee has calories in it. The only thing it doesn't is basically plain water and your little diet things like your Diet Cokes and all that sort of stuff. But everything else you put in your mouth is a calorie. And when it, I'm not trying to tell you guys to calorie count because, again, some people can't do that. But you need to have a basic understanding of how many calories you need to roughly be consuming. If you don't want to calorie count and you're frustrated with fat loss, what do you expect? You have to do some work. People say, I don't want to count calories. It's not about having an unhealthy relationship with the food. You need to have an understanding of what you're actually doing so you can do something about it. You can't just blindly assume, oh, no, I've got it, I'm eating healthy. If you're eating healthy and not dropping body fat, then you're not in a calorie deficit. And again, remember, eating for health is not eating for fat loss. Eating for health is to be healthy, not fat loss. So eating healthy, you don't care about your calories. You're more concerned about your health. If you're eating for fat loss... You can be healthy, but you need to use the fat loss principles of being in a calorie deficit. Does that make sense? So if you want to eat healthy, eat healthy, but understand if you're not counting your calories, you're guessing. If you want to eat for fat loss and be healthy, awesome, but you need to count your calories. On some way, shape or form, until you understand it, you will be constantly confused and just basically be falling off the bandwagon. But ultimately, people get confused, they get frustrated. Frustration is the biggest thing that I find with people. They get frustrated with it. They get frustrated because they don't understand why they're not losing weight. Yeah, I say, how many calories are you eating? I think about 3,000. Food diary, 4,500. Okay? Because again, you have no idea how many calories you're eating. And why would you? Because you've never looked at it. And again, you just assume because something's healthy, healthy, it's got to be good for you. Just because something is healthy does not mean it's good for you. You can go to a bakery and it'll say, Vegan dairy-free uh, brownie. Ooh, yeah, it's got to be. It's vegan. It's dairy-free. It's gluten-free. It's healthy. No, it's still a brownie. 
Okay, it's still a brownie. So just because it's healthy does not mean that it's going to give you fat loss because it's got calories in it and every single calorie, no matter how healthy it is, will come into something. So with this, sleep and hormones will affect the amount of calories that you consume. A lot of studies, there's uh, hormones called leptin and ghrelin. I don't have time to go into that today, but again, if people are interested, I did a, a special 15-minute video for my Lean Queens, which is basically me talking in front of a whiteboard that explains what leptin and ghrelin is and how leptin and ghrelin, ultimately, if you're lacking sleep, can cause you to binge on food. So if you're tired and you notice that sometimes you fancy naughty things, it's a lot to do with your leptin and ghrelin, okay? So your sleep and ultimately your hormones affect this. So again, if you're on medication, if you've got hormone imbalances, this probably won't work for you. You need to either come see me or go see a specialist and get it sorted out through blood tests, okay? But ultimately, for most people, this is the most fundamental basic thing ever, okay? Deal with this first. Unless you've got some underlying issues, then go get that sorted out first. Again, calories out. So what's that? Uh, your body just working. So your body, just by lying in bed, doing nothing, if you are alive and blinking, your body is burning calories. Uh, doing things like walking, cleaning, uh, fidgeting, so I'm a massive fidgeter, you'll see me even now, just walking around. I'm burning calories while I'm talking, I'm also sweating quite a bit, so I'm moving around, burning calories. And also the exercise you're doing, aerobic, anaerobic, weight training, cardio, that sort of thing, that all constitutes as burning calories. So they did a study with um, a little, 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 uh, cleaners, uh, I don't know what for the name then, uh, cleaners in America. Uh, so a big New York uh, hotel, and they basically got 100 cleaners, I think, and they split them, don't quote me on this, the numbers, but they basically split them 50-50, and explained to half the cleaners that what they were doing was actually exercise and more exercise than the recommended daily allowance. So explain to 50 of them what you're doing actually counts as exercise and a lot more exercise than you should be doing. And explain to them the benefits of their job and fat loss and health. The others, they didn't. They're doing the same thing. They're doing the exact same job. One group understood that actually this could contribute to their burning calories out that group started to lose body fat and weight compared to the other group because they understood that actually what they were doing was exercise. So they started to do it a little bit more. So if you're hoovering and you're cleaning and you're burning calories, are you a little bit more likely to sort of do some squats while you're hoovering, a little bit some lunges, a bit extra? It's all calories burn and it all adds up. And it sounds stupid, but it all adds up. It all adds up. Everything is a calorie either being burnt or uh, being used. So ultimately, remember, this is the big one, a calorie is just a measure of energy. Nothing more, nothing less. It's a measurement of energy. So when you hear something contains 100 calories, it is basically describing how much energy your body could potentially get from eating or drinking that thing. That is it. It is not 100 kilograms, 100 pounds, 100 tenths of a pound, nothing to do with weight, nothing to do with fat. It is purely energy, okay? Calorie is energy. That is it. Do not be afraid of calories. There's nothing wrong with calories. It's purely a measurement of energy. So when I put here, your body could get from that. There's a number of things that could implement that. So your cell health, for example. If your cells aren't working optimally, you will not get the same amount of energy from that 100 calories as someone with optimal cell health. Gut health. Again, it's a massive topic. I've been talking about it all day long. If your gut is not working optimally, you will not get the most out of your 100 calories. If you are stressed, you will not get the most out of your 100 calories. And if you are on medication or have hormone imbalances, you will use this 100 calories differently to somebody that's absolutely in fine health. Okay? Does that make sense? You are not what you eat, which is what you're constantly told. Oh, you are what you eat. If you eat crap, you're going to be crap. No. You are what you eat digest, absorb, and ultimately utilize. You can eat the healthiest thing in the world, but if you can't actually break it down and use it, it is pointless. So if you're consuming 100 calories of good quality food, and you can actually utilize it and tap into it, amazing. But if you're so fucked you can't utilize it, you can eat the healthiest things on the planet, you're not absorbing it and utilizing it, so then you don't become that. Okay? So everything that you eat ultimately becomes you. Which again, we're talking about. So you are essentially what you eat. If you are eating poor, processed, crappy foods, then ultimately your body's using that to create you. But only because it's digested it, absorbed it, and utilized it. So going back to the very fundamental principles we spoke about, you need to get your cells working optimally to get the most out of the 100 calories. Does that make sense? Do not be afraid of calories. Calories are purely a measure of energy. I cannot stress that enough. Now, to what a lot of people probably came here for, let's work out your calories. So again, I said heavy note taking. This is basically me giving you a very basic, very, very basic, non-personalized 
way of how you can work out your calories so you can go home today and figure out where to go. Because a lot of people have no clue where to go. They think, well, I need to eat healthy. Right, okay, now I know what calorie is. I need to be, but what do I do? This is what you do. First thing, you need to work out your basal metabolic rate. Your basal metabolic rate is the calories that you, sorry, the amount of energy you expend while at rest doing absolutely nothing. So if you're just sat there vegetating on your bed or on your sofa, the amount of calories you burn doing that. Okay, so go on to something called calculator.net and type in BMR calculator. Type in your information and it will give you a very, very rough guide of how many calories you probably should be on. There's also a little graph down the bottom and it tells you uh, if you're sedentary, if you're active, very active, blah, 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 blah. And it then gives you the calories you should be, eat, should be consuming based on that energy level. It also explains what it means by active, very active, blah, 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 blah. So from there, it gives you a baseline to start from. Remember, it's a formula. It doesn't know you. It's not saying, oh, hi, Daniel. Just stick your finger in here, do a little bit of DNA thing, and we'll see what's going on. Here's your personalized calories. It's giving you a basic idea of what you should be eating. So then once you've got your basal metabolic rate, so again, calories burnt doing nothing, but please remember to use the graph at the bottom, and it will then tell you uh, how many you should be consuming based on your expenditure. Then download MyFitnessPal. I absolutely love this app. It's completely free. Under Armour now sponsor, I think, for whatever reason. But essentially, download MyFitnessPal. It's completely free. You can get a paid version for it. Then it'll tell you how many calories should you be on. So you set up my fitness pal, you log in and type in your calories. On the settings, it can calculate your calories for you. I think they're pretty shit. So use what you've just learned from that basal metabolic rate, okay? Start off with that. It'll give you a little column. It'll say how many calories you want to consume. Type in that number. And here's a rough guide of a percentage of how much protein, carbs, and fats you should be on, give or take. So then straight away, your my fitness pal will tell you you should be consuming X amount of calories and it'll then work out how many grams of protein, carbs and fats you should be eating. From there, track your food for the next seven days and do not change a thing. And every single day it will tell you how close you're coming to your numbers. Let's say for example, to make it super, super easy, ignore all this at the minute, just, just use this formula at the bottom. Let's say it's telling you, you so ignore this, we'll go into this, literally just focus on these numbers here for me. So let's say, uh, after doing the base metabolic rate, it's saying your calories should be 1,400. This is clearly built for a little midget that's probably like 4 foot 11, because that's a very low calorie thing. Let's say 1,400 calories, it should be on. 1,400 calories, and you've been consuming to do seven days tracking on MyFitnessPal, and you're at 4,000. Okay? Shit. So that's why I'm uh, gaining fat. You'll then know. You'll then have all the numbers to know what you should be doing. So, let's say you're on 4,000. Do you know what? I'm just going to... I told you I love it. So, you're on 1,400, and then on my fitness pal, after you've tracked it for seven days, it tells you you are eating 4,000 calories. You now know that's where the problem is. Are you going to drop your calories down to 1,400? No, that is fucking stupid. Drop it down to probably 3,500. You're now in a calorie deficit. See where that takes you. If nothing changes, drop it down to 3,000. You're then in a thousand calorie deficit, give or take, okay? Things should start to change. But also remember, if you're eating shit quality food, you're not helping get your cells into fu optimal function. So it's not just about dropping your calories, it's about what are you actually consuming. But does that make sense? You need to know what you're eating and where you should be aiming to, to do something about it. So you set it up based on this, set it up, give you a rough idea of where you should be, and then track it for seven days. Do not suddenly start to eat healthy and like a monk because you're lying to yourself. Another seven days of eating shit isn't gonna, help, isn't gonna stop you, it's not gonna hurt you anymore, okay? So eat seven days as you would, mindlessly. Just eat what you normally would, and then you'll have a number to work from. But you need to know what you're eating until you can do something about it, okay? Then from there, you then try and drop it down. If after you've dropped it a few times, nothing's happening, Drop me a message on Instagram, or come and see me, come and see Matt, come and see Hannah, or come and see Charlie, and we'll give you a helping hand, because something along the lines of calculations has gone wrong, okay? Also, be sensible, when you're tracking for that seven days, if it's a, you know it's a stressful day, and you know there's seven birthday parties that week, don't track it that week, because that 4,000 calories is not gonna be accurate, okay? So a typical seven days, track that. 
So my final thought on this is pick and choose your battles. So it's not about living like a monk. And I say this to my clients all the time. I'm not expecting you to eat like we did thousands of years ago and not have any of the good stuff because it tastes absolutely amazing. But pick and choose your battles. If you're serious about fat loss and you're going out every single weekend and getting smashed and eating shit food, you then can't complain that you're not dropping body fat. You need to take responsibility and say to your close friends and family, right, I'm going out once a month and it's only special occasions occasions your birthday kids birthdays anniversaries parents birthdays key events not your brother's sister's dog's second grandmother's birthday that's stupid you can always find an excuse every weekend to go out and eat shit stop it take responsibility if you really want fat loss give yourself at least three months and give yourself a fighting chance by not going out and getting smashed but if you are going out what can you do once you've got the calories you should be consuming times them by seven that will then give you your weekly calories that you should be consuming, give or take. And then from there, plan ahead. If you know you're going on a date and the guy's very attractive or the girl's very attractive and you go for Nando's, first of all, don't go out with them. It's a terrible first date choice. But let's say you go to Nando's. Nando's menu is online. Go online. Pick ahead of time what you're going to have so you don't look like the idiot that's there like, oh, well, Dan says we've got to eat healthy. And then all your friends are going to be like, no, he's an idiot. But if you've already picked ahead of time what you want, you can be like, what do I want? Oh, this menu, I've never seen this before. I'll have this. No one's then going to turn around to you and say, why are you having that, you weirdo? You've picked it. No one's going to question your food choices. Of it's your food choice. But then you know how many calories it is. You can then work it out in your weekly total. You can manipulate things so that you're still eating the same amount of calories. Does that make sense? Planning ahead of time saves you so much hassle. So it's not about being afraid of going out. Just use your brains. Don't set yourself up for failure by going to Annie's Burger Shack and not looking at the menu. I've had a client get in shape going to Annie's Burger Shack once a week. True story. Anyway, moving on. Weight loss versus fat loss. This is where the scales will lie to you. The scales will lie to you. And if you don't... When it comes to weighing yourself, I always say to people, weigh yourself. If you're going to do it, do it every single day. That then also creates a very, very unhealthy relationship with the scales. But if you're going to be an idiot, go and do it. But ultimately, what you'll then see is trends. You'll see a trend that your weight will fluctuate, but your weight does not equal fat loss. So what I say is, every two weeks, weigh yourself, Monday morning, straight out of bed, go to the toilet, completely naked, step on the scales. If it has gone down, even by a pound, awesome. Because you know the trend is going down. Because ultimately, it can spike up and crash down. But you're looking for what fat loss does. Fat loss is down your weight will fluctuate because your weight does not equal fat. Weight takes into account everything. If you've had a heavy meal the night before, food weighs something. So if you're going to change your diet and you're now eating healthy foods and the pure volume of healthy foods is more, you're going to weigh more. If you're exercising, doing stuff like weight training, it can change how your body holds on to uh, water. If you're eating more carbohydrates, which aren't the devil, water follows carbohydrates. That's how bodybuilders water load and get massively pumped up for their stage, uh, the, the thing on stage. Weight fluctuates. Fat loss, if you're in a deficit, won't. So use weight as a tool. Also ditch the word cheat meal. I saw this on Instagram when I set up for Lean Queens. When it says, uh, trainer says you have one uh, cheat meal a week and it ends up being like uh, Dwayne Johnson the Rock. Have you seen his cheat meals where the guy's colossal and all the guys think they're Dwayne Johnson the Rock when they're a little uh, matchstick? You can't do what Dwayne the Rock Johnson does, so don't try. Okay, so when it comes to cheat meals, cheat meals creates a very unhealthy relationship with food. That's not what you want. A better thing is off plan meal. Slightly off plan, it's off plan. But you've planned, if you have planned for it, it's not even off plan, it's a plan for meal. You're cheating. Who likes a cheater? When has anyone ever said, oh, I love a cheater, unless it's the animal? No, one's like, I don't, no one plays the game Monopoly, oh, I love playing with a cheat. No one goes into a relationship and thinks, I love a cheat, absolutely love a cheat. Cheat is a very negative word. So saying you have a cheat meal creates a very negative relationship with food. So say it's an off-meal plan, so then you're then in control of it long term. But don't be afraid of eating higher calorie, less nutrient dense foods if it's only every now and again. Okay, it's fine. It's not the end of the world. Go back to the thing we spoke about. But three things, three tips. Research the restaurant beforehand, like I just said. Don't go hungry. Do not starve yourself thinking, well, I'm not going to eat all day because I'm consuming a load of calories. No, because then consume even more. And that blood sugar roller coaster we spoke about will go into overdrive. So don't go there hungry. Even if you have something like a protein shake that's got calories in it, it will just slightly fill you up a little bit more. 
Okay, even this little handful of nuts just fills you up a little bit, so you're not going there absolutely ravenous. Also, train that day. Again, in Lean Queens, I explain how you can manipulate this in a lot more detail. Uh, and training before you go out and have uh, a big meal can help out massively. Also, pick either have a starter or a dessert. Don't have both, okay? So three little tips how you can deal with going out and eating. I've done amazing for time. Am I talking really, really quickly? Am I, everyone okay? Cool, right, so I've got a few more slides left. So, scales. Things to remember when we step on the scales. Again, I covered a little bit about this because I didn't know if I had time to do it. It measures absolutely everything. It measures muscle, fat, bone, organs, the food and water you consumed. There is absolutely nothing that correlates your weight going up with fat loss. Unless it's constantly going up, then you need to be worried. If it's constantly going up after months, yeah, you're doing something wrong. But don't be worrying about weight fluctuations. Look at the pattern, look at the trends. The trend is going down, I don't care how minimally it's going down, awesome, good job, okay? Don't get caught up on numbers, if it's going down, good job. Uh, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't reflect what's going on within your body. So again, if you started doing more cardio and strength training, you may be building lean muscle tissue. So, biggest myth ever is that fat weighs more than, muscle weighs more than fat. Okay, if anyone ever heard that, muscle weighs more than fat, no. It's the same. A, kid, a pound of fat and a pound of muscle still weighs a pound, okay? Like a pound of feathers and a pound of bricks still weigh a pound. Does that make sense? Muscle is just more dense. So if the weight's going up, you aren't going to be gaining muscle, okay? So if it's consistently going up, don't think, oh yeah, I'm gaining muscle here. No. Very good chance you're not gaining muscle because it's, it's a potentially other things that are going on. So don't suddenly think you're gaining all this muscle. If things aren't going right, address things that's happening. But essentially, if you're weight training, you may be gaining lean muscle, so your weight may be staying the same. You're swapping it around, okay? You're getting rid of the body fat, you're just holding on to lean muscle mass, okay? Things will be going on there, so don't stress about that. The scales aren't moving. Glycogen and carbohydrate stores. Again, when I send you this, feel free to read this in more detail, but essentially, for every gram of glycogen that is stored, so for every gram of carbohydrate your body stores, three grams of water is stored along with it. So if you started to consume more carbohydrates, this is where females freak out. They've never had carbohydrates for two months. They have carbs. Oh my God, the weight's gone up. Yes, because water has followed the carbohydrates. You're absolutely fine. Let your body settle out. Look at the overall trends that's going on with your body. Okay? So if you're weight training, you're also working the muscles more. The muscles need feeding. They will drag things into the muscle. That's when it swells up. This is how bodybuilders carb load, remember? They carb load by getting super, super lean, depleting everything of whatever it does. Then they have a load of carbohydrates and like massive balloon men. That's how they do it, okay? It's all to do with this, carb loading, water and manipulation and carbohydrate manipulation. So don't stress, have a look at, have you started to increase carbohydrates into your diet? If you have, that may be why the scales have gone up slightly. Changes to your diet, again, we'll go into this a little bit more. But again, if, you, if you're weighing yourself, make sure it's in a dehydrated state, as in first thing in the morning. If you drank loads of water, again, that can affect things. So again, changes to your diet and your nutrition. If you consume things like more fiber and stuff like that, more vegetables, more higher volume foods, food weighs something, that might be why the scales aren't shifting. You have to let your body change. If you're in a calorie deficit and you're eating healthy, and for the first two weeks the weight doesn't change, as long as you haven't gained anything, be patient, okay? Be patient, it will happen. You need to trust the process, okay? Things that you hear online, your friends are doing things and it's happening like, again, this is taken directly from a Lean Queens thing, so ignore the, the halfway point. But essentially, when it comes to Lean Queens, they've got eight weeks. Some people do not see any changes in their weight after four weeks, and then they can drop a stone in the next four weeks by doing absolutely nothing. The body needs to play catch up. Because most people who do lean queens are sedentary. They do nothing. They're then doing the boot camps, coming into the gym doing weight training, and they've changed their diet. Their body's thinking, what the fuck is going on? But if they're stepping on the scales constantly, which is why I say I get them not to weigh themselves. They do it every couple of weeks, and they get frustrated. But then after week four, it drops down because the body's caught up with what they're doing. Because if, you're if you've cleaned your diet up, you're consuming less calories, and you're exercising more, you will not be gaining body fat. You can't be gaining body fat. There's no way you can. Okay, so just take your time, be patient, trust the process. This is how you keep it off long term, not the quick fatty thing where you get a fix in two weeks. Okay, does that make sense? Awesome. I'm done talking finally. But essentially, uh, we're here to help. So everyone at Spy for Fitness, uh, we've got the team, we've got Charlie. If you've not seen Charlie, Charlie's the new good looking one I've hired. There's me and we've got Hannah. And ultimately, the next Lean Queens is in January. 
So January is my next Lean Queens. Um, so again, if you want more information about that, please let me know. If you want any more information about the Prime Life Project and how one of us can help you, please let me know. But ultimately, everyone here, uh, whether it's the uh, front of house members of staff, Matt or anyone, we're all here to help you guys. So if you are confused about what I've said, if you implement what I've said and it's not working, please let us help you so we can get you there a little bit quicker. If you want a copy of the slides, if you want a copy of this video, or if you want more information, please come and see me at the end, um, and I'll take your email address down, and I'll fire it over to you. If you don't get a chance to do it, just drop me an email, and I'll just send it straight over to you, okay? Does anybody have any questions? Hmm. Awesome. Cool. Well, like I said, I'd like to say uh, thank you very much again for taking time out on a Saturday to come and hear me talk. Um, like I said, I'm always here to help. The team's always here to help. Uh, I wish you all the best on your journey. And I said, have a lovely uh, rest of your weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. We have got the chef coming from Nottingham. We're hoping to be here for about half.